Hi there, Leo. Hope you guys had a great December and a beautiful holiday. Welcome to 2017. This is your January reading. It's going to be a general reading. Um, and it's going to pertain to sort of the first half of the month. Okay. And let us begin here. We're going to do the Celtic Cross. Um, same layout as the last month. We're going to have your um, distant past card right here, followed by your recent past. Then your current situation is following your recent past with um, the advice card following your current state. Following that, we're going to have your near future, then your hopes and your fears, or your hopes and or your fears, and your final outcome. Then we're going to be crowning the reading with three cards, the first of which is going to be the energy that you really stepped into that helped lead you to your current state, followed by the card of environmental energies, um, kind of the energies that surround you, lay at your feet as you move forward through the month. The last card up top in the crowning position will be the most likely potential outcome. I like to look at that card as a sort of energetic pathway that you're moving along and towards as you make your way through the month. All right, so without further ado, let us just give it a last shuffle here. I'm getting a sense of uh, almost being hurried, like a, a rush about something, perhaps. Um, something that you consider quite important, perhaps. Okay, here we go. Distant past, recent past current state, the advice card, uh, near future, hopes and or fears, final outcome, the energies that you harness that help lead you to your current state. Um, this is the environmental energies card. I believe another sign got this as well. And I believe that is it. And so we're gonna f turn the deck upside down to get the thematic feel for the reading. And how curious, how interesting. Um, the Sagittarius reading had the mother of swords in the theme position as well and also had these two cards in their theme position okay so hmm. okay let me take a look at the elements at play first. You have one major arcana here. Okay. So 
So there is significant fire energy, significant wand energy. Here, 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 wands. And below the Mother of Swords, you have the Four of Wands, okay? So the underpinning kind of, as I see it so far, right? Of everything else that's going on is very much related to the action that you take, the movement that you make forward. There's almost a sort of chaos here to the spread, right? You have a lot going on in chunks throughout, um, it seems. Okay, so let's let's get right to it then. Um, oh, well, other than the wands energy, you do have the four of cups, water, emotion, intuition, okay, the emotional reservoir of ourselves. You have somewhat of a prominence of sword energy as well. I would say sword and wands are kind of going hand in hand. So air and fire energy, the logical mind, mental analysis, and the action that you take are very much in a way going hand in hand together, okay? Or, or somehow related. Okay, however, action, almost like the feeling of being rushed, a hurried feeling is uh, very much prominent. Okay, so and fire in and of itself, the fire element, right? ruling the signs of Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, um, is very fast paced, right? Fire is quick, it grows quickly, right? So, and it can be somewhat brash, right? But nevertheless, it's quick paced energy, okay? And you do have a pentacle card right here in your distant past. This almost seems like a distraction, like a distracting energy I'm sensing. There's a lot of bits and pieces that are happening separate of one another in a way, right? That is somewhat separate from something that maybe you were working on in your distant past. Okay, this is the Six of Pentacles. This is sort of right before the bloom, right? Steady growth was in the past, okay? Then moving forward into this Seven of Swords, in reverse, however, it's sort of like in comes this energy of the analytical mind, the, I look at this card as sort of the ruminating in a way that perhaps isn't straightforward with oneself, maybe. Okay, this is like the growth, fertility, um, uh, reaping benefits, seeing progress in a tangible way, and this is more of a sharp jutting energy, right? A sort of um, a contrast to the to nature's natural forms. Okay, you have the circles, the pentacles. You have this curvature of the plant, and you suddenly here have this sort of very angular. Um, Sort of sly um, card and energy here and the orientation of these cards together right is interesting somewhat also because the swords 
because this card is in reverse with the seven of swords, these swords seem to be pointing, right, into this life form, this plant that is um, supporting the growth of these pentacles. Okay, so in a way, this is almost like a halting energy. This is almost like something, like almost like a setback in a way, maybe. Growth was occurring and taking place. You were working hard towards something, perhaps. And then in comes this sort of uh, stopping point, maybe. Okay, but we'll get more to this energy as we move forward and and take a look at the other sword energy at play, okay? I'm also sensing an ambiguity with this card, right? These swords are pointing this way. This sword, this one sword is pointing in the other direction. And the fox is upside down. There's a sense of ambiguity of a crisscross, a crossroads, crossroads. I'm really getting that. Okay. A sense of not knowing maybe which direction to go in. That's really what I'm getting with the chaos in a way that I'm feeling the disjointed in a way efforts, right? Or distracting energy. I'm feeling could be because of this this could even be the mental state, like processing through, analyzing in a way, just being in a fog, not being quite clear maybe on how to proceed. But let us, let us move forward and gain a better sense of the flow of energy as we see it here. So now, after your recent past, right, after this energy here of a sort of crossroads, we get the two of wands, okay? And it's in reverse. So the two of wands, right? I see it really as a sort of decision, a decision point, right? These two wands are pointing down, funneling to a single point, right? Almost like drawing a line to a single um, focal point and saying, make a decision about this, right? Zeroing in on what's important. There's very much a zeroing in energy as well here, especially with these two cards. And even this one here, there is a zeroing in, a funneling towards something, okay? This lightning bolt, all these wands are funneling to a certain point and there is almost like this shock factor of make a decision now. Like this is um, forcing the alignment of something, okay? Where we had a confusion perhaps, a decision is needed to be made in a, in a very action-oriented way, okay? This could be passivity stall stalling and this is now taking action with um whatever you might have been ruminating on or confused about okay so you know right side up this card really it has a lighter feeling to it right the two of wands are leading up in this sort of ethereal way you know kind of letting it up to the gods to make the decision and and answer right it's still there's a there's a pensiveness about the two of wands when they're leading up and the card is upright but because it's in the reverse there's much more of a focused um pressure almost pressure i'm feeling pressure pressure okay to make a decision about something pressure the pressure point that's what i'm feeling pressure point also with this card here son of wands again in reverse the the wand is pointing down to a single point so similar to this card here and this card but really similar to this card this focal point 
that's just radiating out, okay? Focus your energy in a certain place, okay? With a certain mind. Gaining focus, that's really the message I'm getting, okay? So, you stepped into this energy, right, of the, the pressure of needing to make a decision, perhaps. Focusing your efforts and channeling your efforts in a certain direction, that's very clear. That helped lead you to a sense of greater form in terms of your efforts, okay? The actual efforts that you're making, right? It seems that there is greater form to them now, right? Leading you up the staircase, these wands, Okay, so this really, in a way, stepping into this energy really helped lead to greater um, structure, even, in terms of your efforts, okay? In a way, clearing up the confusion. That's sort of what I'm sensing. The fog is clearing. You still have the moon here, right, which is a symbol of um the mystery the unknowing having to follow your intuition right being somewhat in the dark but still being guided by the moonlight right which is a form of light and clarity but just one that relies more on your intuition okay let me just make sure we are recording here okay perfect so right greater structure, more clarity, right? Regaining your balance, that's what I'm feeling, regaining your balance, okay? And making your way steadily but surely now in this new direction. Following your intuition, maintaining hopeful, okay? Trying to see the light even in a situation that maybe is somewhat dark, right? This card is really the darkness in the in the background of this card is speaking to me right now. With this is sort of these pentacles, right? This plant is growing in the darkness maybe. It hasn't come to fruition yet. It hasn't come to a comp to completion yet. Right? So perhaps there is still this darkness, not knowing where to focus and channel and, and funnel your energies. But in light of that, you're now focusing on the hope of the situation and the, um, the positivity of it, okay? And your intuition in it as well. So guided more by your intuition in this situation rather than the swords energy of the logical mind, the uh, analytical mind, right? Okay, so there was a clearing somewhat of this halted energy. And then we have as your advice card, the Son of Wands, okay? Now, you're going from a Nine of Wands to a Son of Wands. The Son of Wands is a stronger suit of the Wands energy, right? It's a higher form. It really kind of embodies the archetype, right, of the wand's uh, personality in a way and character. The wand's f uh, energy is fire, right? It's passionate, it's creative, it's enterprising, it's entrepreneurial, it's um, really bold, just a go-getter type, right? So, and that is your sign, that is your element, Leo is fire, okay? So, Son of Wands is a very mm, charismatic sort of um, persona, right? One that is really pursuing his desires, pursuing his goals, what he sets his sight on, right? Personified by the snake, sliding, smooth, smooth operator type of energy, okay? 
and I'm really seeing this in terms of growth. Growth of the growth that was. The, the reference, right, the referencing back to perhaps your deep past. Recovering in a way what once was and taking action, continued action with it. Really, really stepping into that energy, okay? But it is in reverse, okay? So, and let me just listen for a moment. So the Son of Wands upright is a very fiery, fast moving, excitatory, like I said, enterprising energy, right? One that goes after what he wants, okay? And it's somewhat of a... It's a younger suit, right? Than let's say the father or the mother of wands. Okay. It's a son. It's it's the earlier, um, it's the earlier suit of the of the um, of the higher suits of the element. So, it's an earlier, younger energy. And so going with the going with the sense of pressure to to make a decision, to make things happen, to move forward and through this stalling, okay, of action and growth and movement forward, you have sort of the um the advice, right, to move forward perhaps in a wise way, okay? This is maybe sort, somewhat of a rushed energy, right? One that's just going to go right after it and the sun is going to shine and the plant's going to bloom. It's sort of saying, focus on the foundation maybe first, right? Think about... The, the roots, right, of the plant that is growing. Rather than just looking up and focusing. And this is, again, also very much this energy of funneling downwards, right? Rather than up. Okay? And see, this energy is very much leading up. But as your advice card, you have this son of wands right taking action yes taking action nonetheless um pursuing right pursuit but in a way that is um perhaps um more introspective more um investigative even right analytical of 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 the root of what is being contributed to and what you're working towards okay getting that right there is you you want to move up there's this encouragement of moving up and forwards and going on but you're beckoned to um reconsider your actions in terms of how they form the foundation of what you're growing and moving forward with so a slowing down of energy a little bit and focusing inwards a reevaluation um, of some sort okay in your near future you have the four of cups all right and this is the only card signifying emotions for you in the spread 
I'm just making sure we're still going here. Perfect. So, I'm sensing that there might be a sort of reluctance, somewhat of a reluctance, right, to slow down, perhaps. There is something emotionally that you're holding on to that I don't know if it's um, not wanting to uncover something, not wanting to release something emotionally. And if you look at these two cards, right, they do somewhat speak to each other, I feel, right? This fox is sort of a smaller animal down to the ground, hunched over. This rat, right, is very similarly hunched over, a more, um, a more low riding creature, low riding. <laughs> I don't know if that's a word, but hey. <laughs> There's this sense of hideaway almost. Okay. And let's see that you have this moon here, right? This is almost like an emotional reclusion, a protectiveness. There's a sense of protectiveness over something that you don't want to follow your intuition with in some way, right? With this card, you're following your intuition. With this card, the moon is not um, in its natural um, bright shining form. It's not yellow, it's black, right? And the focus becomes on these four cups that this rat is laying over, protecting, hiding. Okay, so you have a very protective energy here, and you have also a very protective energy here with the Mother of Wands in reverse. Okay, so there is somewhat of a fear of um, almost someone, I feel, breaking into what is yours. I get this feeling, someone breaking into what is yours in a way. Okay. All right, so. You then move on to the 10 of swords in the final outcome, okay? Which could mean the finality, right, of this this intellectual, mental, analytical, overly analytical perhaps perspective, okay? This could be a concern, right? Something that you feel highly protective over that seems to um, just consume you in a way and distract you even, right? It seems, but it's a 10. So it's coming to a close. It is the completion of the cycle of this element in a way. And with the Mother of Swords, as the theme of the reading, but in reverse, okay? I'm, I'm getting that feeling, right? And this is similar to the Sagittarius reading. Mother of Swords in reverse, upright Mother of Swords is this really serious, uh, almost cold, calculating, focused, direct uh, energy. Okay, and persona, but when she's upside down, I'm seeing it in this situation as really taking an approach, right? The Mother of Swords is one of the highest forms of the sword suit, right? The mother, the father, they are the strongest form of the sword suit, the air, excuse me, element. So, in a way, right, it's this approach that I sense you're softening. 
you are softening the approach, right, of taking this intellectual, protective, 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 perhaps even approach to something, right? That's coming to a close, the petty, the petty side of that in a way, right? The distracting, um, self-sabotage on it. There's a, sab there's a sense of sabotage, right? Like you have this growth and then this comes in and sort of halts it. So I'm sensing that there's going to be a close to that. There's going to be a close to that sort of standstill. And with the Mother of Swords, you're coming through as much more mature. Okay? You're coming through as much more mature and wise in terms of how you're going to handle the situation. You have, in a way, been reborn in, in terms of how you handle the situation. And when it comes up right, right, you are approaching it with softer, um, with soft, a softer demeanor. Okay? You're going about it in a way that is um, more understanding. Okay? And this, when you look at the Four of Wands here that you have, I really see this as a sort of portal energy. Okay? An opening, right? With these lines that, that surround this sort of portal, this eye, there really is um, a new world that awaits in front of you. So I feel that it is, right, a change in perspective. I'm definitely getting that, a change in perspective, right? Releasing this confusion, distraction, um, orientation of your of your view on on whatever the matter is here and taking one that is going to open your eyes to this new perspective and new world okay and you have the father of wands right below that as well so again wands and swords fire and air the analytical mind and the action forward right father of wands very strong fire element very much in command okay but they are in reverse so there is a sense of i'm getting these will come when this does all right and it can even be read as the, again the softer energy of it but i'm feeling really that it is sort of the need, right, of this approach that's more wise, tempered, understanding, mature, um, right, that will help lead you to more um, responsible, creative, passionate actions forward. Okay? In your environmental energies card, you have the four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, this is the yeah, this is the eight of wands. So there is like some sort of shake up, it feels, right? And this could, you know, really make sense with the ten of swords here, the finality of the cycle, as well as the culmination of wands here. Um, sorry, I hope I didn't say the Ten of Swords, it's the Ten of Wands. So, this is definitely a culminating energy, um, and this is the Eight, right? So, it's sort of a, um, a dialogue that's occurring, and one that is sort of a shake-up. And with this too, right, the pressure point of funneling down to make a decision, right? the introspection almost of the actions you take. This is like the forcing of uh, the way, a certain way to look at something. There's definitely an element of perception that I think is being zeroed in on, especially with this card and with this card. 
okay? It's like she's looking straight at you like this, and when it's upside down, it's like changing your view and perspective the way you see things, okay? So taking a softer approach. So perhaps this is um, something that is going to initiate, spark this change in perspective, this culmination of this phase and lead to a more tempered, balanced um, view of a situation. And then you have the, um, the star card in reverse as well. Okay. And this is the energetic pathway that you're moving into, okay? So this is sort of saying what you're hoping for, what you're dreaming for is coming, is on its way. But see, when I see this, when I see this in reverse, and let me just make sure we're recording here. Great. When I see this in reverse, I'm seeing it really as, again, the focus. Right? There's so much energy that wants to move upwards, move forward, move on, to grow up, to grow up like the star in the sky. But when it's in reverse, the, su the star is like in the ground almost, right? It's, being fo it's focused downwards, somewhat suggesting that a closer look needs to be taken at the foundation of whatever it is you're trying to move forward, okay? So I hope this was helpful, Leo. Um, thank you so much for listening, and I will be back uh, hopefully mid-month with a mid-month reading. Um, so yeah, stay tuned, and leave your comments below. I am so grateful for all the ones you left last month. I read through every one of them and really appreciate your words. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in about two weeks. All right, bye.